Hey there, and thanks for watching. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to share another use case for chat GPT in commercial real estate. Now, if you're following this series, you've likely seen the previous videos that I've done where I've used GPT, which is generative pre-trained transformer. It's a artificial intelligence autoregressive language model that in essence uh, uses deep learning, uh, the entirety of the internet to generate responses to some prompts that, that we, the prompt engineer, if you will, uh, generate. And so in the first video, I created prompts that generated VBA code uh, that ultimately I used for VBA macros in my Excel real estate financial models. Uh, the second case, I used this engine uh, to generate prompts to help me uh, better write, say, letters of intent, memorandums of understanding, um, uh, lease LOIs, things like that. Uh, business use cases where I am, as a business professional in real estate, creating non-binding documents that I share with other business professionals that we negotiate and then ultimately pass along to attorneys. In this case, I'm going to talk about how we can use the tool to speed along research, uh, as well as speed along the, the collection of, call it data points that we need, either to create models or to do research in real estate. And so let's get started. Uh, the first use case I thought would be interesting is, let's imagine, uh, let's say you're an analyst at a real estate firm, and you need to produce a list of the top 50 largest cities in the United States. And the way that we've done this thus far is either you have some internal uh, uh, research at your firm or you just simply go to Google and you say largest U.S. cities. And it's going to, you'll go to the, the internet here and there'll be different sources that will have this information, right? And okay, here's the top 10 and okay, here's a list and it's in a format that's kind of tricky. Uh, this is 2023 population, and I have a list. And, and so I would go through this exercise where I would try, I'd copy and, and paste this text maybe into an Excel file that I would then share, uh, and it would be a manual process. But it's all out there on the Internet um, and or in the databases that I have internally in my shop. Or I can use GPT to generate this information faster. Uh, and so the first task is to, to create a prompt that will do that. And the prompt is, okay, I need to understand what information I want and, and the format in which I want that information. And so I would say something like this, uh, create a list of the largest cities in the United States. And our prompt actually a list of the, let's say the 50 largest cities in the United States in order of population with the uh, population included, make the list in CSV format. Okay, when why the CSV format matters is then I can copy this list into a CSV file or into a text file that could be imported into say Excel or into some other database tool. So I, I generate that prompt and GPT, chat GPT says, sure, here's a list of the 50 largest cities in the United States in order of population as of 2021. Now, one of the downsides to, at this stage in February, 2023 of the AI is that the knowledge base is a bit dated. And so some of this information will be less relevant. In this case, uh, there's not a lot of changes between the 2021 population and the 2023 and the benefits that I get in the speed that this that this uh, creates versus having to manually go out and, and put this list together, that speed outweighs, in my mind, the staleness of the information. But anyway, so here I have, this is a CSV file. Notice there's a copy code. I could just copy that. I could paste it then into, say, uh, a text file or use that in whatever manner I, I, I wish. So here I have New York, Los Angeles, Chicago. Now you'll notice that there's a few cities that don't make sense. San Antonio, look how far up it is. These are cities and those cities' population. It's not the metro areas. And so we might come back and say, actually, make the list uh, by metro area. And now it's going to modify the list. It says, sure, okay, here's the list of the 50 largest metro areas in the United States in terms of population. And then it's going to give me the metro area name, 
and the population next to it. And now uh, maybe it makes a bit more sense where up here, these, these are purely cities. And that's why you have, say, San Antonio here in the top 10. San Antonio geographically is a large city and therefore its population is large. Whereas many of these uh, metro areas contain smaller cities as part of the larger metro. And so ChatGPT will go out, it'll create that list for me, it creates it in a format that is easy to use. Now I'll stop the generating here. And let's use now a prompt, a way in which this really becomes efficient. And a use case that I can think of is the creation. So this is my value add apartment acquisition model. And here I have a state and a county input. And currently these are just simply hard coded values. So anyone could come in here and type in Wyoming or someone else might come in and type in WY, the county, maybe Cheyenne. I don't know if there is a Cheyenne County. I know there's a Cheyenne city in Wyoming. Uh, excuse my ignorance, but whatever the county may be and someone might misspell the county uh, and or in other words, there's not any data validation in these cells. And in order to add data validation, I need a list, a list of every state in whichever country that this model would be used for. I'm gonna assume the United States. And then the county that relates to that state. And so the first step to create that module is to actually pull down the information. What are the, what are the states that apply here? And what are, the, what are the counties in each of those states? And so ChatGPT is a very efficient tool to do that. So if we come back here, I say, again, likewise, I'm gonna, and let's get a bit more precise. I'll say, um, I need a list that I can copy into Excel that includes uh, each of the states in the United States in one column and the abbreviation for that state in the second column. Okay, so I give it that prompt, it generates this list for me and now it's gonna generate the list in a CSV format. And in order to copy that into Excel, which that, that's fine, I have to copy this code, paste it into a CSV file and then import it into Excel. And so while this is nice, it's, it's a list, uh, it speeds along the process to get the names of all 50 states in the United States, uh, it's still not as helpful. And so I'm gonna uh, just change this and say, um, let's see, create the same list, but without abbreviations. Okay, so now it's gonna create the same list. This time the list will be without abbreviations, and that will help me. So while the list is being created, I'm gonna come here, create a new worksheet. This I'm gonna call uh, state and counties. And I'm gonna have a list of the state with abbreviation. And then over here, I'm going to have state and county. You'll see why I'm using this methodology. Okay, so I have this. Let's just go ahead and click copy code, come back. Just simply paste it there. Okay, that's easy. Now we're gonna tell it, okay, um, now give me the abbreviations. And here it goes. Here's a list of all the state abbreviations. Gonna do the same thing, just create that list. Nice, easy uh, format where I can just copy. Copy the code, come back here, paste it. Sure enough, there I have my, my abbreviations. And now, actually, let me do that, okay. And now, because what it did, it actually gave me a, uh, a, the first value actually is the header for that column. Now what I wanna do is, okay, what I need though is a list of every state with county. And so there's a few ways we could do it. The first is create a list of every county in and if I go to the first state, Alabama, Alabama, and it's gonna create a similar list um, like so. And there's quite a few counties in Alabama. 
And by the way, if we were to track down the list of all the counties in Alabama, it would there would be some work to do that in, in Google. We can certainly find the list. It's on the internet. Uh, it's likely a, likely a fairly simple Google search. But here, chat GPT will do it quickly. But you know what? My issue with this list is it has the word county at the end. So I'm going to say create the same list, but remove the word county county from the end of each result. So hopefully it'll create the same list, but without the word county. Yeah, here we go. There we go. Now that's what we want. And it'll create this list. I'll stop it so we don't have to watch it. And then I could go like this. I could copy the list. I could paste it here. And then I would just simply type Alabama. And then I could have a drop down. Uh, once I have all of the states with their respective counties, I can create drop downs, dynamic drop downs. And I won't show you how to do that in this video because that's not the purpose of the video. But dynamic drop downs so that once you choose the state, the list for the counties would appear that would show you only the counties for that state. And the key is having the data, and that's why this, this uh, video is about the research potential of ChatGPT. Uh, but let's try to make this even simpler. Okay, so this process involves me manually prompting the, the AI to feed me a list of counties for each state one by one. But what if we asked it to do it all at once? So we said, create a list, of every state with, uh, let's see, create a list that we can copy into Excel that includes every county in every state with the corresponding state in the left column and the county in the right column. Or in other words, we're asking it to generate for us this data, but that would have every state and every county. And so if you imagine there's 50 states, and let's pretend there were 100 counties per state, we would have 5,000, 50 times 100, 5,000 rows of information. So let's see what happens. Uh, I spelled corresponding wrong. And the beauty is you can see what it generates, and we can stop it. And there it goes. Alabama, comma. Autaga, I'm butch butchering it, Baldwin, Barber, and so forth. And it's going to take some time to produce this list, but uh, it, this will be much faster. And while it's producing the list, we could come back here and be working on our model and then come back to the list and copy it. Now, in this case, because it has a comma, we would need to then uh, uh, clean the data in some way, either drop it into a CS CSV file and then import it into Excel or paste this information into Excel and then uh, convert that into two uh, columns, which is again, a video for another time. That's, that's data manipulation, but this is, and this is about chat GPT. Um, let me stop this. What are other use cases? Well, an, another one might be, for instance, let's say that you're building a model. Uh, for instance, here we have, uh, actually, I don't, I don't have that here, but let's imagine I wanted an input that was every, uh, it, it could be, um, so this is a apartment acquisition model, but the input might be um, property subtype. And we'd need a list, and it could be garden style, right? So if we were to create a list, Let's come out here, imagine what that list might look like. Um, subtypes, you might have garden style, you might have mid rise, you might have high rise. And I can generate that, but the nice thing about GPT is it gives you additional ideas. Uh, it's, it, it, it's not meant to fully replace our ability to think, but it helps kind of, it helps us think, it hel helps uh, you know, create I further ideas for us. So for instance, we might say create a list of subtypes within multifamily. Let's see what it creates for us. Sure, here's a list, subtypes, apartments, condos, townhouses, duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, co-ops, mixed use buildings with residential units. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> moderately helpful. Um, Again, this is simply the knowledge that, that's on the internet and apparently things like garden style 
what about garden style apartments on this list? Yes, you're right. Garden style apartments can be considered a subtype within multifamily. Here's the updated list. So then it updates and adds garden style apartments. Uh, thanks, chat GPT. Uh, but anyway, you get the idea. It, it's, it's meant as a tool to help you capture information quickly uh, that you can then use in your work. How, how about another one? Um, what uh, are the fastest growing metro areas in, in the United States? So maybe uh, you want to invest in the fastest growing MSAs, metro areas. And so this is actually giving you a list from 2021, but a list of the fastest growing metro areas by population in the United States. Uh, and, and we can ask, okay, note that this list is based on population growth rates and not absolute population numbers. It is possible that other metro areas may have higher population numbers, but are not growing as quickly. That gives us the top 10. Uh, what about the same list, but with 25 uh, metros? And so it's going to expand the list now. Uh, and interesting, right? The villages in Florida, which is uh, a, a metro that attracts retirees in Florida. St. George, Utah, also a retiree uh, metro area. So you can imagine as our population matures in the United States or ages, metros like the villages in Florida or St. George and Utah see outsized uh, growth. So here it gives us now 25. And then we, let's ask, how about the same list, but by absolute population numbers and not by, yeah, just to say that, absolute population numbers. So this should be the same list, only absolute population. So the most people move to the New York, Newark, New, uh, New, New York, Newark, Jersey City MSA, uh, then Los Angeles, then Chicago, then Dallas and Houston, Washington, which isn't surprising, right? Those are, those are already large metro areas. They have a lot of in-migration and out-migration. Uh, and at least in, as of 2021, absolute population numbers, these are the largest. Um, I think these are absolute population. How about, how about the growth in absolute population? Let's see if that changes anything. On the change in absolute population from 2010 through 2020, right? So this is these are just the largest 25 MSAs. So the prompt that we gave, I said, hey, how about the same list but by absolute population numbers? And the AI didn't quite understand my question. And that's the importance of your prompt, right? Um, and you've probably heard that there is a new job that's coming in the, in the future called prompt engineers. In, in essence, individuals that understand subject matter areas and can create prompts that, that produce outputs that are useful. And so in this case, my first prompt wasn't particularly useful. I modified it to say, how about growth in absolute population? And here you have the 25 metro areas that from 2010 to 2020, not on population growth rates, but on absolute population had the greatest uh, year, uh, decade over decade change. So for instance, Phoenix, grew by 755,000 people from 2010 to, 20, 2010 to 2020. Uh, Dallas was second, Houston third, New York fourth, Los Angeles fifth, Miami sixth, and so forth. And so this could now uh, help us as we're developing our own research as to which metros we might target. So anyway, I hope this video is helpful. It's, it's another way in which uh, I am using ChatGPT in interesting ways in commercial real estate. Love to hear your ideas. Uh, drop them in the comments below or, or shoot us an, um, an email. Otherwise, thank you for your time.